Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to uh, do UV mapping and texturing in Blender 2.9. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the add-on UV squares. And basically, it changes the uh, shape of your UV mapping into squares, which is easier to work with in the UV editing tab. So I'm going to just go and install the add-on so you guys know how to do it. So UV squares add-on Blender. I will put a link in the description. So you go to the GitHub and you can just click code, download zip. Small file, just only 16 gigabytes, I think. Now we're gonna X off this and we're gonna go to edit, preferences, and we're gonna install from file, downloads, UV squares. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna search here, UV squares and not with enabled on and then we're going to install it like that and you can see where the location is uv editor and panel uv squares so now it's installed you can close this off now bring up your model that you would like to be learning uv unwrapping on and i will bring up mine okay so here's my model that i'm going to uv unwrap to get this wood texture to look nice. Right now it kind of looks like a really bad Minecraft texture. So I'm going to move this down just so I can get more flat workspace and I'm going to move right onto this. So first of all I'm going to go over here to the modifiers tab and make sure I have them disabled in the viewport so I can really see what I'm working with. So I'm going to disable all these and go back to here. So now you can see I have my just uh, the base mesh of this boat and it's not looking too well. So we're going to go over here to the material, and we're just going to remove this material that uh, my friend put on there. And we're going to do a new material, base color, we're going to change it to an image texture, and um, just grab your texture, whatever one you want. I have mine in downloads, and it's a brown planks texture. So now that we have this texture, you can kind of see it kind of lines up on the floor pretty well already. And that might be good enough, but you know, we're going to add this a little bit. So we're going to go into vertices selection mode and we're just going to mark the UV seams where it's going to unwrap. So I'm going to select my vertices. We're going to start with the floor because that is the first uh, panel that we're going to be doing is the floor. So we're going to select all of them that surround the floor. Yours may not have a mirror modifier on so you know just do, what, do whatever you think is right for you. So now that you have your vertices selected just hit control plus E on your keyboard and mark seam. Now it's marked seam, you can see that it has been outlined in yellow. Now go into face selection mode and select all the faces that you want to be textured. Like that. And make sure you only have those faces that you want. Now you're going to go over here and we're going to do UV, UV unwrap. Now it's the uh, uh, size of the boat on the bottom and I'm going to hit alt E for the UV squares add-on. And there we go. We now have textured floor. And you can see how the grain of the wood is all lining up no matter which face we're on. It's because it's UV unwrapped. Now if you don't have it square, it can still work and it might actually work better for this instance just because it's already going along with the shape of the boat. So I might just leave it like that. So we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Move it along over here and then we can scale it. So with UV mapping in Blender, the more you scale something up, the more times the texture will be duplicated over the faces. So if you don't want very much, uh, you want it like really thick boards, you'd scale it down and then you get really thick boards. Or if you want very skinny boards, you scale it up and then you get multiple boards on the floor. That's looking really good. So I'm gonna move on now and I'm gonna select the faces that are on the sides of the boat. So basically we're gonna go into vertice selection mode right here and we're just going to select all the vertices that are like on the side of the boat. Notice I'm not going to select the ones on the back because that would be its own panel of wood in a an, on a normal boat. So we're going to select all these vertices right here. You could go into circle selection mode but for me right now for more precise selecting I'm just going to select them manually by hand. Okay, now that you have all your vertices selected, go ahead and hit Control-E and mark seam. Now, 
you know what to do. We're going to go and hit 3, go into face select show mode, and select all the faces inside of our new seam. So I'm going to go and do that. And now that I have all my faces selected, you can see that we can only see like this line here. And that's because it's not UV unwrapped. It's changing the 3D form of the faces into 2D, and when it's at a certain angle, it can't show it besides just the linear view. So, to do this, we just click UV and unwrap. Now we have the side of this boat again. Now, sometimes it can be good to just leave it like this, and I'll show you like what I mean. So when we installed the add-on earlier, basically when we hit the Alt and the E key, it changes the form of these squares into real squares, because right now they're bent to the size the shape of the boat. Now sometimes that is beneficial, and sometimes it can be detrimental. So at the for the time being, I'm going to just rotate it 90 degrees until I feel like the, scene, the grain of the wood is going along with the edge of the boat, and we'll see what it looks like. Get along the y axis to make it thicker, and you can see that really that doesn't look too good because the seam is going the wrong way. Now, if we go like this and we rotate it like that, another 180, negative 180, you can see that it still doesn't look good. So, what we're gonna have to do is hit Alt E and turn them into squares. Now, you can move them like this and rotate them like that 90 degrees, and we have them going along the seam of the boat. And that's why we downloaded that add-on, is because it's very helpful for when we're doing something like that. So now we're going to scale it up a little bit, and so we feel like that would be the size of boards on the side of the boat. I think that works quite well. So we're going to move on. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the UV seams on the side. Notice we're going to switch out of face selection mode into vertices selection mode, and we don't have to reselect those ones that have already been marked as seams. So we're just going to select those ones along the top, and then we're going to do control. E, mark seam. Now we're going to hit C for say, uh, uh, C for circle selection, and go into face selection mode, and just select all those faces that are on the back of the boat for their own panel of wood. We're going to hit A to select all of them over here, go over here, and click UV, unwrap. Now you can Alt E to turn them into more squares. Next, rotate it 90 degrees, or however you, your model works for you, and we're going to kind of want them to line up with this side of the boat right here. So I'm going to scale it along the Y axis. Whoops, along the Y axis. And scale it down to get bigger boards to go along with boards on that side. And we can take a look at that. I think that looks quite well. And tab out of edit mode. And you can see we've got our boards. They line up perfectly, actually. And I'm going to keep it just like that. So now let's move back into our layout tab, and you can see that we've got our board texture on there. And it looks great. But not really. It doesn't have any real texture to it, because it's just the picture on there. So to make this look a little bit more 3D and enhance your renders, we're just going to go over to the shading tab and do a little bit of editing. So we're going to take our uh, image texture, shift plus D, duplicate it, and plug the color of the new one into the roughness. Now, if you look at it, it should be like really shiny now, just because the roughness is the same. So it's shiny, and we don't want shiny, it just doesn't look real. So we're going to shift A, bump. And the bump modifier just uh, uh, uses algorithms to decide where there should be bumps on like a wood texture or a rock texture, and it applies it to the texture. So we're going to plug that uh, color into height and the normal into the normal on the shader. And now it's like really bumpy and shiny. Now to change this, we're just going to scroll the strength down to zero, and we get back where we started. But if we scroll up just a little bit more, we can start to see the wood take some shape. I'm liking that. So I'm going to keep it just like that. Now, for better results, you can switch it into cycles, but it really depends what uh, rendering engine you're used to. So there's our wood texture, and it's looking good. I'm just going to go over here into the World tab, change the background to an environment texture, and open up a picture that I've already previously saved on this computer. This is not necessary for the tutorial, but just for better looking in the viewport, I will do that. And there we go. Next, the thing to do is to make sure it's all working properly, we're going to go back to the modifiers tab and turn them back on visible in the viewport. Like so. And there we go. The boat has been textured and added a little bit of roughness, which is nice. I'm going to select these and just apply the same old material that I just created. 
to these pieces of wood and I think that'll be good to go. So material and I'm not taking the time to UV map each of these boards just because they're basically rectangles and the computer already basically knows their shape. Obviously these ores are going to be a little bit different but it even looks like a little bit of bamboo so it's going to be alright. And there we go. Our boat has been textured and UV unwrapped and mapped and retextured. So there you go. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope it helps.